Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I upgraded the stock hot end on my CR6SE to a Micro Swiss all metal hot end. This was my first time upgrading the hot end on a 3D printer. It ended up taking me a long time to get my prints to turn out well. So if you're considering to upgrade your hot end, maybe you can learn from my mistakes and maybe find a path to a solution in this video if you're having some issues. To be clear, putting the hot end on was pretty easy. It was a mixture of a couple mistakes on my end and then dialing everything in that ended up taking me a while. I found myself going down the road of upgrading my firmware and PID tuning, which I guess upgrading the firmware will help you get a higher temperature anyway, so that was worth it. And I did the PID auto tuning to make sure that my temperature was steady. Anyway, if you're interested in watching me struggle more than I should have, keep your arms and legs in the vehicle at all times. Let's get right into it. Okay, so I'm going to quickly show you how I installed the hot end, and you could use this as a tutorial if you like, but there are probably better tutorials out there for putting this on. I don't exactly have the best camera or lighting for this, but I did what I could. Moving on. I first removed the two screws holding the hot end shroud on and set that out of the way. I could have unplugged the fan from the board and completely moved it out of the way, but I didn't think it was necessary. Then I removed the heat sock and preheated the nozzle to 235C. After I removed the filament, I then removed the nozzle, being careful because it's scorching hot. The Micro Swiss hot end came with a steel nozzle, but I literally just put this brass nozzle in, so I'm just going to reuse it until I get harder filament that will require the harder nozzle. Now the instructions said to let the hot end cool down and then remove the PTFE tube. But I'm pretty sure this would have been easier to remove while it's hot, and that's why you see me struggling and having to use pliers. When it's hot, I can literally just pull this out by hand pretty easily. Speaking of the PTFE tube, I already had a Capricorn tube laying around, so I decided to change it anyway. I then powered off the printer and removed this fan with the two screws holding it on and set it out of the way. Then I removed the two screws holding the hot end on from the top. Next, I was being extremely careful here because these wires that are connected to the thermistor are very delicate. There are grub screws on the bottom that I need to loosen in order to remove the thermistor and the heater cartridge. My thermistor was pretty well stuck in there, so I had to place an Allen key in the hole on the other side of the block and push on it. It took some doing, but I got it out undamaged. However, if I had damaged either of these two pieces, it's not the end of the world. I've seen replacements for the pair under $10 on sites like eBay. Now I assembled the hot end starting by attaching and tightening the thermal brake to the heater block. And then I followed that up with the cooling block, tightening it in place with the grub screw. Then I screwed the nozzle on. Back at the printer, I inserted the cartridge and the thermistor in the new block and tightened their grub screws. And then I attached the hot end to the printer with the two top screws. After that, I turned the printer on and heated the hot end up to 220C. I did notice an unpleasant odor here once the hot end warmed up but it eventually burned away. After reaching 220, I grabbed the block with a pair of pliers to keep it from spinning and retightened the nozzle snug. I 
did the same thing for the four grub screws on the bottom, holding the thermistor and heater cartridge. Then I let it all cool down again. The instructions say to put the fan on first, but I thought it would be easier to put the heat sock on first, then put the fan on. And you'll notice here, I accidentally put the fan on backwards, but I did catch it before printing anything, and fixed it. I cut my Capricorn tube to length, then slid the nut on first, followed by the compression ring, Then I inserted the end of the tube into the hot end until it bottomed out and tightened the nut snug, but not over tightened. After that, I put the hot end shroud back on and I was done with the installation process. The instructions also say to change your slicer's retraction settings to no more than 35 millimeters on the retraction speed and to 4 millimeters on the retraction distance. This is done to avoid clogging on the new hot end. Now that concludes the installation portion of the video. What follows is a major headache I endured trying to get prints that didn't, uh, well, didn't suck. I'm going to get into some of the steps I took and guides I used trying to resolve this issue and then share the solution I eventually came to. Maybe one of you who are having an issue can find these steps useful. My issue starts here with a stringing test. The first one was done in Matterhacker's PLA on the original hot end, and while it's not the best, it was good enough for the majority of what I print. I could easily deal with removing a little bit of stringing from a final print, and solving this little bit of stringing would have been pretty easy anyway by nipping the last 10 millimeters or so of the PTFE tube off and lubricating the whole tube. Anyway, this print was my baseline. Upgrading the hot end had to be just as good, if not better, in order to justify the upgrade. Aside from the ability to print higher temperature filaments like nylon, I had to print PLA with at least the same quality. Well, uh... Here's what I got. So this obviously looks terrible. And at the time, I was pretty aggravated. How did I go from this to this? I thought, upgrade? This is a downgrade. So I searched and searched and tried what seemed like hundreds of different settings. I found out how to do the PID tuning with a video by BV3D. Same results. I played around with temperature settings and retraction settings on what seemed like a hundred different prints, most of which I stopped halfway through because they still looked like crap. Then I found another video Chep made where he explained how to use several different temperatures and retraction settings in just a couple models built within Cura. Same results. So I flashed my firmware by following a ModBot video and did the auto PID tuning from there just in case. And as you can see, I was still coming up with the same nasty stringing whatever it is and I was running on fumes. I decided to put it away for a day, which turned into two days, which turned into three days. I just wasn't in the mood to start racking my brain again. I was beyond frustrated. No matter what I did, nothing had changed the quality. They each came out nearly identical. You make Hulk angry! Hulk smash! Ow! I contemplated returning the hot end. Surely it's defective, I thought. Which meant taking it all apart and starting over. I sat and stared at my printer for a while, filled with questions and no solutions. Defeated, I started to take the hot end apart. I unscrewed the Bowden nut and started to pull the filament out, and that's when I noticed the filament caught a slight snag in the tube. I thought it was just caught on the filament that blobbed at the tip. So I cut it away, but it still got caught. Could this be the problem? I inspected further. Looking at the squash ring, I noticed it was crooked. Could this really be the problem? I must not have held the tube perfectly straight when I tightened down the nut. I checked the clearance with a loose piece of filament, and sure enough, it was getting caught right there at the squash ring. 
I had to force it through with some slight pressure. I grabbed my original PTFE tubing, put the nut and a new squash ring on it, and held it as straight as I possibly could while I tightened it down to the cooling block. I also printed out this filament filter, cut some pieces of foam to fit inside it, put some oil on those pieces of foam, and clipped it to my filament. I did this because I saw that Chip had briefly mentioned that all metal hot ends could benefit from this. Once everything was back together, I tried printing again, and success! My issue was solved. It looks a thousand times better now. I even attempted a print with my PETG after I got it along with the silica beads dehydrated. And this calibration cube turned out pretty good for having changed almost no settings in my slicer, aside from the retraction speed and distance I mentioned earlier. So if you're having this problem, maybe check to make sure your Bowden tube is straight and the squash ring isn't too tight. I'm not saying this is the end all be all if you're having a similar problem, but it's an easy place to start. All right. That's all I've got for you today. If you liked the video, consider subscribing and click the thumbs up button. Links will be in the description. I appreciate you tuning in. Catch you in the next one. And as always, have the best day ever.